So hello and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're looking at some United States $1 banknotes. So I don't make it a habit of collecting United States banknotes even though it's probably a good idea that you do uh, because the currency is stable. Uh, it's more stable than uh, a lot of the other currencies in the world. So uh, if you're going to collect Kenyan banknotes, you need to take into account devaluation and hyperinflation, as well as Argentina. But with the United States, we've never seen this in the past. That's why I pretty much discount the talk about people saying that, you know, the American dollar is going to go through hyperinflation. Uh, yeah, inflation, probably up to 10%. Hyperinflation, you're talking about, like... I don't know, 10% per hour or whatever. So, let's have a look at the banknotes. I have only got four, and the oldest one that I have is a 1935G. So, if you go to Numista, you can get all the information about how many were printed. So, so if we go to Numista, so here's the actual banknote. Uh, and if we go down... Gives you the amounts that were printed, so we want 1934G, and there's a 32.4 million. So that makes that banknote a bit common. Uh, so the features on it are the blue serial. So what's a blue mean? Blue means it's a silver certificate. If you get a silver certificate with yellow, it means it was issued in North Africa. It's worth a bit more than the blue ones. Uh, but these ones you can still get in circulation. I've seen it on some YouTube channels in which uh, people have uh, gone through $1 banknotes and sometimes they might have got that one. And the second one I have is a 1957. So this one is so has a print run of about a hundred million. And the serial, uh, the serial number starts with C, so th that's a one of the Fed districts, but I can't remember which it is. Uh, that's what the Federal Reserve Bank is, and so that has George Washington, and on the back we have the emblem. So it's not a coat of arms because it's not a shield; it's an emblem with our uh, oh, they call it a bald eagle uh, but I call it a glorified seagull about the size of a seagull which tailed eagle could eat for lunch and here we have uh, you can find information on this on Numista uh, just a pyramid and it has the date down the bottom which is uh, 1776 so if you're not too familiar the M is 1000 the D is 500 two C's is 100 so that's 700 then L is 50 two x's is 20 so one x is 10 so it's 70 then we've got five which is the v and the i is one so 1776 and how much would these banknotes cost okay so for the 1935g uh, this is what i get on ebay so probably about 15 Twenty dollars. This seems to be in good condition. Uh, you got a whole bunch there. You can have a look through. Uh, and then you got poor ones. So this one's in worse condition than mine. Ten bucks. Uh, but in the, that's in Australia. Uh, if you're going to purchase them in the United States, they should be a lot cheaper. Because the standard rule of thumb that I like to use is in their home countries, the banknote is if it cheaper or more expensive than outside their country so that is because there's even more demand in that country or there's just so many banknotes that uh, there's pretty much no demand but if you go outside the country uh, there definitely will be less of those banknotes outside so how about a 19 what's it 1957 so, 57 should be more common. 
definitely more common. You've got three times as many banknotes that are out there. Okay. Strange, when I put it in, I just got bloody cars. You know, these model cars, I'd rather save up for the real thing. Okay, so this is what I get. So you've got 12 bucks. That's pretty circulated. This one looks uncirculated. $20. Um, yeah, about, about $12, $13. Uh, for one in this condition, I would say in Australia probably about fifteen dollars. Uh, because if you're going to pay up, look at the postage twenty five dollars. Not surprised. I charge twenty five dollars to send over there uh, because too much stuff goes missing. So no wonder why the postage is so high. Uh, they've just lost too many items, so they've gone uh, stuff it forty nine. Yeah, so you're talking uh, probably about. Was it probably about twenty dollars for this banknote, and about ten to fifteen for this one? Uh, if you're going to go lower than that, obviously the grade's going to be a lot worse. Then we have the current banknotes, so you can see the style of this side is a bit different. Talking about uh, around the one, also the style of the ones, and also this one is the green seal. There's a Federal Reserve note, legal tender. And a fun fact is that these silver ones were exchangeable to silver up until 1968. Then they were just exchangeable with Federal Reserve notes, but now they're just legal tender notes. So that's just the way things are going. You see this one has blue serial numbers. This one has uh, green. And if we look at the print run 40... 2003A. Oh, another thing I didn't mention is that you sometimes see it's got A, B, C, and D, whatever. It's because they changed something on the note. And most of the time, it's the serial signatures that they change. So if they change one or both of the signatures, uh, they change, they either print a new date or they put an extra letter on it. So this means there is a 2003. Uh, the 2003A means they change the signatures. And Numister has all the information. It's the best site for this one with the banknotes. So 2003, I'm just scrolling now to see it. Okay, 2001. Yeah, so there's 2003, 2000A up to F, I think. H, J, so, they don't print banknotes every year with their own number on it. It's only when they actually change it for some reason. And this banknote here has... So, this is issued in Atlanta, and that's what the F is, and that's what the F is at the front of the serial numbers. And the J is just generic. And we've got the plate number here. Also got another plate, FW, I think that's Fort Worth. Uh, on these ones, you also got the same thing. So you got the two different plate numbers. So I'm not too sure. You can find that information. There's a plate number on the back as well. So that one's 114. And the back of this bank note is pretty much the same as that. And I believe these were introduced in this design. Oh, sorry. First thing is that this had a print run of uh, $723 million. So pretty much they're only worth, you know, in Australia, probably like 2 to $3 each. Uh, but in the United States, probably just face value because there's just so many of them. Okay, so for this back design, 1935, that was introduced as far as I know. Um, but for this design, 1963. And this... Front design was also introduced in 1935. The 1923 banknotes are quite different. Uh, and they're probably a bit more expensive. But they have had George Washington on this banknote since 1923. So, I hope this helps you with your banknote collecting. Uh, now, I'm, I'm not a big collector of US banknotes. Uh, but there's quite a lot on the internet and on eBay. And pretty much, they 
I would say they retain their value. So if you buy these ones for fifteen dollars, five years time, you could probably sell it for like sixteen, seventeen still. Uh, if you sell it on eBay, you will lose a bit of money through the fees. Uh, but if you sell it, you know, by yourself, then you might be able to uh, get your money back. Anyway, thank you very much. I'll leave some links down below. Have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Let me know what you think about US currency.